Channel 29, KBAK-TV, Bakersfield. Dr. Gould tells me that there was uh, some sort of hearing to determine if I was uh, fit to stand trial. Yeah. But it was pretty clear that you'd be unable to face any kind of a court battle. I'm very grateful to you. To you and Trevor. Now that I'm better, I guess the DA will set a court date. That's why I called you. How should I plead? Well, you're not going to have to make any kind of plea, Gloria. There's not going to be a trial. I don't understand. Well, Seth Tanner wanted very badly to prosecute you for attempted murder. And I must admit, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to convince him not to. But you had quite a champion in your corner. To give the devil his due, the main reason that you got off the hook is Adam. Haley will be a lot happier when you're not here to push her buttons. So please, Arlene, take my job offer, leave Pine Valley, and let Haley live her life in peace. Why are you so hot to get me out of town? Because you're driving Haley up the wall. Why am I the only one that realizes that it's, a, it's perfectly natural for a girl to get frazzled when she's making her wedding plans, huh? She wasn't frazzled when she announced her engagement. She was deliriously happy. And then it hit her, boom. She's getting married. And then butterflies as big as bowling balls start tumbling around in her tummy. Something hit her all right. You hit her. She, she hasn't been the same since you got to town, Arlene. My little girl and I just need time to get used to each other again. It's only natural. I've been out of her life for years. Yeah, whose fault is that? Well, you're a fine one to talk. You've been behind bars, too. Oh, yeah, I know all about it. Haley wrote me all about your phony kidnapping and how you helped to drive your wife mad. I need a list of, I need a month of Sundays to list all the ways you've disappointed my little girl, so don't you start throwing stones at me. With a dad like you, she needs me. She needs you like she needs a vodka stinger. You're the one that needs her. Call off the wedding. I assume you're joking. I'm not dead serious. Alec, Haley's not ready. Trevor, don't you think that's up to her? Look, when Laurel and I went and invited her to be part of our wedding, Laurel got the distinct impression that, that Haley was not too happy about her own nuptials. Now, I got the same vibes when I talked to you guys at McKay's the other night. Wait a minute. That's what you were talking to her about? Yeah, and it no. hit a court. Well, she says that you got into it about her mom. Well, her... Yeah, Arlene popped up, but uh -huh. that's not what's got her tied in hangman's knots. I started talking to her about Charlie Brent. Maybe that it was a rebound routine no, you're on Trevor, you gotta tick me off here. Look, Alec, I know Haley like I know me. What's going on with her is what she's not talking about, and what she's not talking about to fill up the Pine Valley phone book. When I mention your marriage, she goes ballistic. Bing, bang, boom, ricocheting all over the place. Then Jack could take cover. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. Harry, darling, you're on. Thank you. Knock him dead. Richard Bradshaw's stunning evening dress of white silk crepe. Seed pearls, caviar beads, and crystal lockers and encrust the bodice and repeated the cuffs on the Strike the pose. All the designers involved with fashion for cancer research are putting their money where their hearts are. They are donating a percentage of their profits from their fall collections to cancer research.
Oh, my God, is she dead? Call 911. We need an ambulance now. Ward, clear everybody out of here. Last thing she needs is an audience. All right, people, clear the set. I want everybody backstage. Make room. Hey, Rico. Can you hear me? I got a pulse. It's weak, but it's Oh, there. thank God. Let's get her off. No, 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 no. You no, can't no, touch her. You don't know how badly she's hurt. Leave her alone. Erica. Erica, can you hear me? Ambulance is on the way. Good. How is she? Oh, Erica. Darling. Oh, darling, don't, don't, don't leave me. Don't. Just don't do that. I love you, darling. I need you. I can't, I can't make it without you. So, so darling, you, you hang in there. You hang in there. Oh, Erica, open, open your eyes, baby. Open your eyes and look at me. Yes, oh, yes, thank God. Erica, Erica, hey, sweetheart, everything's okay. You're gonna be fine. You're just an old meanie. The truth hurts. Well, I think you like hurting me. I don't know why. I mean, I've... I've been sober for almost four years. Good for you, Arlene. All I want is to be close to Haley again, that's all. Just like we were in the old days. How do you know how close you were in the old days? You were always gassed to the gills. We loved each other. Through thick and thin, we were almost like girlfriends. Haley doesn't have any girlfriends now, remember? Nobody to lean on. Nobody to confide in. I doubt that she tells Alec much. All she has is AA. She has me. Well, what if you're not exactly what she needs right now, Arlene? What if you are more than she can handle right now? You know, she was thrilled to see me. She hugged me so tight that I could barely breathe. What, what choice did she have? You took her completely by surprise. Well, I had no time to call her. No time. Three minutes? Collect? Long enough for her to say, stay lost and hang up? Look, why would my little girl want me to be here for the biggest, most important day of her life? I don't know. Why didn't she ever talk about you while you were gone? I guess it was painful. You guess? You guess. How many times did she come to visit you in Plattsville? Two, maybe three times in four years? I don't blame her for being a stranger. She was a kid. She was ashamed of me. Which is why she's dying to have you in her reception line at her wedding. Haley has forgiven me. Are you sure she told you that in so many words, Arlene? Or are you just assuming that the way you assumed she'd cover for you? You look, it is not. It's not my fault. It is not my fault what happened to Harry. Harry? What's Harry got to do with this? No, no. Who do you think you are? I'm your uncle who, who loves you like his life. I would expect something like this from Adam, but not from you. Leaning on my fiancé to try to get him to postpone our wedding? Who died and made you my social director? No, no, he's not He's not trying to cause trouble. No, he's just trying to no. ruin my life. No, he thinks he's doing what's best for you. Oh, okay? by, by postponing my wedding? Quick, where's my happy face? I'm just asking you to pull up on the reins a little bit. That's no, all. No, you're sticking your big fat schnozzle up where it does not belong. Look, we can discuss this calmly. There is no discussion here. We can talk. Talk and never hurt anything. Who asked you to interfere in my life? Think, if, if I saw a guy crossing the street about to be hit by a car, I would grab him, pull him out of the way. I wouldn't stand there waiting for him to invite me to help him out. So now, Alec and I are an accident waiting to happen? Thank you, Trevor. That's very flattering. I've been making my own decisions for a long time. I pulled myself out of the drink, okay? I bootstrapped my way through the 12 steps. I have done more than survive at the top of the corporate food chain. I've changed myself into a person I can be proud of, so don't you dare for a second think I can't tell the difference between a rebound and the real thing. Trevor, Haley, is there a problem here? <sighs> My ever-loving uncle here won't credit me with a functioning brain. I didn't say that. You got smarts, kid. The problem is you might have too many smarts. Oh, so I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Once a screw up, always a screw up. I never said that. I you know I never mega said buck that. deals, but I can't choose a mate. My employees trust me to steer the enchantment ship, but according to you, my wedding is going to sink like the Titanic. 
I don't know about you, Alice, but I'm not too jazzed up about the idea of strolling down the aisle knowing all of our guests are waiting for me to fall flat on my face. So I say we blow this popsicle stand and elope tonight. All my children. I don't have to stand trial. No. I would hope you'd find that a pleasant surprise. I do. I just assume... I mean, Dr. Gould never mentioned it. I, I just assumed that uh, he didn't want to set me back in my therapy. Well, no, actually, to bring somebody to trial, first you have to bring them up on charges. And Adam made sure that there weren't any charges. Why? I suppose he felt that you'd suffered enough. Jack, I tried to kill him. He understands why you did that, Gloria. And as victim, his opinion held quite a bit of sway with the DA. So, when Dr. Gould says it's okay, you're out of here free and clear. Adam did that for me. Look, it's no secret that I'm not much of a fan of Adam Chandler and what he's done to you. But the truth of the matter is, he fought for you like he was fighting for his own life. I remember Anna's funeral and the poisoning. I thought Adam was dead. Then he came to see me. He crossed the room and, and my heart started beating again. He wished me well and he told me to have a happy life and then he left. I thought I had dreamt it, but it, it was real. It really was Adam. Yes, Adam did something else you may not be aware of. A favor. He, uh... You remember those papers you brought to me last summer? Those divorce papers you wanted me to file? Mm -hmm. What about them? Well, the day they brought you here, Adam signed those. He said he wanted you to be free. If that was what you wanted. What did you mean about Harry? About not... Not being responsible for what happened to Harry. What happened Nothing to happened to Harry. Harry was a good man. And he lived a good life until the day he died. It was no one's fault. I mean, even when I got tough on him and grilled fresh veggies and fish, I mean, he'd go out and get clam rolls and fries and... Arlene, you're rambling. Well, I need to go anyway. Where are you going? I just got someplace to go. We're not through talking yet. Look, I've heard enough. I've been dreaming about my little girl's wedding since the day she was born. And there's no way I'm going to miss it or let you ruin it for me. I don't want to love you, know? and, and I don't think that you really do either. Oh, wonderful. Now you're telling me what I think. Tink, I, I didn't come here to cause you guys any trouble. Trouble? No. Trouble, capital T, for Torpedo Trevor. Haley's wedding, bombs away. No, no, nothing like it. Please. Put Alec on red alert. Haley's not ready for marriage. I think I am not after you. I'm with you. I'm behind you a million percent. I just want you to be as happy and excited about your wedding as Laurel is. But see, here's the thing. People deal with happiness in different ways. I mean, picking out china patterns and registering at Lacey's bridal boutique, that's not my style. I'm not a, a traditional sort of bride. That doesn't mean I'm not excited about my wedding. I hear you. I hear you. If everyone would just stop trying to whip me into this prenup frenzy and back off the pressure, you might catch the sight of a blushing bride. Okay, all right, look, maybe, maybe this is my fault. M maybe I'm the one that's been putting on too much pressure to make this happen. Do you see what you've done? Honey, you are not pressuring me, okay? It's just matrimonial madness. I had no idea that planning a wedding would be so overwhelming. Yeah, I understand. So, why don't we push the date back? Oh, I just want to get it over with. You know, you know what I mean. I mean, I just want us to be married so we can get on with the wedded bliss stuff forever. You're sure? I'm positive. Okay. This this is your call. Okay. I'm sorry. 
gonna beat your head off, Uncle Trev. Hey, it's okay. You can bite my head off anytime you want. Well, um, if I get out of here now, I can make it to uh, the next AA meeting. Maybe let some of this out. Yeah. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, no, please. That's great. All right, I'll meet you back at my place later. Yeah, you bet. Okay. I'll see you around, Uncle Trev. Okay, take care. Gentlemen. Now you see what I'm talking about? Dimitri. What, what happened? Darling, you fell. Bad. I know, I know. Just hold on. There's an ambulance on the way. Help me up. No, no, no honey. Listen, listen to me. You gotta lie still, okay? Don't move. It's okay. Why? How badly am I hurt? Well, we don't know that yet. We're going to get you to a hospital. No, I want to go home. Well, you, you'll go home just as soon as we know you're all right. Of course I'm all right. I have to be all right. You are. You will be. Now just try to lie quiet. Just lie quiet. If she doesn't want to marry me, all she has to do is say the word. Word, you see, that's it. As far as Haley goes, her mother's word never meant anything. Ergo, Haley keeps her word. Oh, good, Trevor, good. If that's true, how am I supposed to work around that? Let her off the hook. How? What do you want me to do? You want me to tell her that I don't want to get married? That's the picture. No. The only problem, Trevor, is that I do want to get married. I want that more than anything. Even if she has her doubts. She doesn't, you know, she, dude, she doesn't have any doubts. She loves me, I love her, that's it. End of conversation. Mm. For those of you who are new, I'm Jeff. Uh, there is no formal speaker today, so whoever wants to come on up and just check in and... Great, come on up. Welcome. Hi, my name is Haley and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Hi. Um, whew, it feels good to be here. Um, if I seem a little stressed out, you'll have to excuse me. Um, I'm getting married. <laughs> and so uh, it's really a surprise, a good surprise. You know, the kind of surprise like when you find money hidden in your jeans pocket that you, you forgot you had or something. That's how Alec is with me, you know, he's total wealth. But since this engagement came out of the blue, a lot of my friends and family are wondering if I'm jumping the gun. And I just want to say that I've known what I wanted ever since I was eight years old. And I used to uh, stage these bridal fashion shows for my Veronica doll. <laughs> and now it's my turn to walk down the aisle, and I can't wait. Weddings definitely bring out the uh, best and worst in people, though. I, some of you may have uh, heard me mention my mother, Arlene, who also happens to be an alcoholic. Um, and after a, a hiatus at Plattsville, she's back. And uh, she sort of sprung this whole surprise visit on me. And she's staying to help plan the wedding, which is cool. Except for the fact that Arlene seems to think that she has a clean slate now just because she's sober. You know, she doesn't remember. I guess she doesn't want to remember that we never really had a, a very Brady family. What, what, um, problems she will cop to, you know, she blames on the booze. She's got an 80-proof alibi for everything. But the booze is really only half the story. She had... things, other things that she did, other ways that she abused the family trust. And she's nowhere near, near ready to deal with that. She won't even try. But, um, I'm going to try. Uh, cold. Here, darling. Here you go. Is that better? It's just like it's on fire. Yeah, well, help. Help 
is on its way. You just, you just hold on to me. Where the hell is it? Yeah, I'll I'll go check. Thank God, over here. Come on, Dimitri. Dimitri, where are you? Come on, Dimitri. 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 Come on, Dim
Smelling the flowers, just thinking, dreaming. So what do you think or dream that you're going to do when you get out of here? I don't know. I can't go back to my old life. I'm not that person anymore. The old me was pretty messed up, you know? I'd say the old you had quite a bit of help getting that way. Well, I can't put all of my uh, blame on Adam. Dr. Gould made me do my homework. He had me do a timeline over the past few years of my life, and uh, I was able to see where I've been and, and how I got to where I am. Pretty interesting journey. Yeah. yeah. I was able to see where I took the wrong forks in the road. When I stopped, when I should have moved on. All the peaks and valleys. It's been quite a ride. Well, you know what they say about hindsight. Certainly, if I could jump into a time machine, I'd go back and do a few things differently. Here I am, rambling on and on about me. That's okay. Mm, what about you? How are you? Plugging along. You seem a little down to me. Nothing I'm going to bore you with. Please, please, you've been listening to me all afternoon. No, you're very sweet. So I'll make it short. Laurel and I got divorced. Jack, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, Laurel's happy. She and Trevor are going to be married. Actually, I guess there's something in the Pine Valley Reservoir, because there seems to be a lot of that getting married going around. Uh, Alec McIntyre and Haley are planning to talk about it. Haley and Alec? Kisses! Stuart, do you have a minute? What about kisses? She'll be safe on the property. Well, if she chews out the begonias again, don't you blame me. What's up? Trevor doesn't think Haley wants to go through with this marriage. Oh, what do you think? I think Haley's uh, out of control, heading for a fall. Oh, you mean like going back to drinking again? Arlene yeah. could drive anybody back on the sauce. She was just in here going on and on about Haley's picture-perfect marriage to her, to the man of her dreams. Haley took off her AA. Oh, well. She's taking care of business. Stuart, I know I took a vow not to interfere in my daughter's life. I can't just sit by and watch idly as Haley rushes pell-mell into a disastrous marriage. So give me permission to do something, anything. To help her out. Adam, you're just, you're just looking for an excuse to, to go back to your old ways again. No, no, no. It's, it's Arlene that's driving Haley up the wall. I need to get rid of her. No, you don't got to do anything. Haley is a grown woman now. And if she's having trouble with her mother, then, then she's going to have to work it out her own way. What if she looks for answers in the bottom of a shot glass? Haley knows where to go for help. You said, you said yourself she's at AA right now. Now, unless she comes to you and asks you to help her, then you just, you just, you just stay out of it, Adam. You just stay out of it. I stay out of it. Basically, all I really wanted to say was that life works out and mine's working. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for sharing, Haley. Uh, now, is there anyone else who would like to come on up and do their thing? Yeah, please, welcome. Hey, everybody. I'm Arlene, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Arlene. I'm also an out-of-towner. And uh, two weeks ago, I was released from a halfway house. And before that, I was in prison serving a sentence for drunken driving. And now I'm in the beautiful Pine Valley visiting my little girl, who's not so little anymore. She's getting married. Whoops. <laughs> and I guess it's how she, well, like she said, life works out. Um, I know how tough it is to resist temptation, and it was hard for me to get sober, and that's why I'm even more proud of my little girl for getting her act together. 
Growing up with me was no picnic. I didn't mean to hurt my little girl. And if I had to do it all over again, well, wait, I would. Stop, stop. I don't want to do this here. Now, Haley, you know the rules, right? No crosstalk. Oh, that's fine. I'm a real pro at keeping my mouth shut. I don't want to be here anyway. Well, no, honey, wait. Wait a second. No, what did I do wrong? What? Why are you so angry? I thought you'd be proud of me if I got a... Proud? Yes. Proud? What did you want to do? Declare this National Alcoholic Mother-Daughter Day? Did you want to have a parade? I am so proud. You want to know how proud I am? I wish I were dead. You wish you were dead? Baby, why would you say such an awful because thing? Because it's true. Oh, you don't mean it. Don't tell me what I don't mean. It's bad enough that you're here. Why is it bad? This... Mom is my home meeting. This is my turf. Well, they seem like a nice bunch. Yes! Mother, they are. They're my friends. They're like family to me. And on more than one occasion, they've meant the difference between me staying sober and me going off on a three-day bend. Well, I know that, baby. I know that better than anybody. Yes, you should know. You should have known better. You should know what this meeting means to me. Out there, it doesn't matter what I am. In here, I belong. I've shared things with people in that room that I've never told another single solitary soul. And you stood up there like it was nothing. How could you do that? How could you stand there like you were at the local bar with your drinking buddies, tipping a few back, talking about your precious little girl and how you were a drunk and hallelujah, we have overcome. How could you do this to me? You took something that was mine and you turned it into something about you. You always have to turn it into everything is about you. Oh, honey, I didn't even know you were here. Mother, of all the meetings in this town, you had to come to mine? I called up the hospital and I got a list of AA meetings. I needed to go one to one because uh, I had a rough morning with Adam. Please, please, spare me the play-by-play. -play. You have a nasty habit of telling me more than I need to know. And you should have left the minute you saw me standing before the group. I wanted to share the meeting with you. I don't know why. I'd, I thought we'd get closer. I don't want to bond with you at the friendly neighborhood AA meeting. I don't want to walk the walk with you. And I certainly don't want to feel your pain. I'm sorry, baby. I really am. I didn't see the harm in that. No. You never do. You got to admit, we got a little problem here. I will admit, she's a little scattered right now. Scattered? She's all over the place. She's coming apart at the scene. No, she's though. not, Trevor. She's nervous. Her first marriage left a bad taste in her mouth. The taste of vodka. Right. So it's natural that she'd be a little jittery about walking down the aisle again. Look, I, I don't know how much Haley spilled to you about her first marriage to Mr. Will Cortland, but she basically sloshed away to the J.P., slurred her way through all of her vows, and spent her whole honeymoon throwing up. She could have married Godzilla okay. for all okay. she Okay, all right. Look, what are we talking about here, really? If it's not just normal pre-wedding jitters, what are we saying? It's me. Right? That's what you're leading up to. Yes, it is, Trevor. I'm what's I got making no her crazy. Beef with you. I just want to make sure Tinkerbell gets what she needs to make her happy. That's so all. do I. So do I. That's why we're getting married. Yeah, but you're doing it in a big rush. Look, what's it going to take? What's going to cost you? If you two are really meant for each other, to just put this wedding on ice for a little while. Nothing. Haley has made so many mistakes in her life. I would walk on razor blades barefoot to keep her from making another one. Trevor, the last thing in the world that I want is for Haley to end up hurt. We're surfing on the same wavelength. Fine, Tink. Talk her through this. looking gorgeous in that beautiful gown. And me turning to you as Count Andrashi dressed in my stately regalia. Darling, that night, 
I knew that I would love you forever. I don't know what I would do without you. A life with you and Bianca. That's all I want. Dimitri, how could we be happy? If I can't walk. Don't you think about that. It's not going to happen. We don't know that. Oh, my God. What if I'm paralyzed? <sighs> Haley and Alec, I, I knew that they were getting close, but... I hope they're happy. I hope the same thing for Laurel and Trevor. You know what you need. What? <laughs> mm. When's the last time you've had a vacation? Oh. I, I'm not talking about a long weekend. I'm talking about a real, honest, fun in the sun, pina colada, trashy, paperback on the beach kind of vacation. The last time. Well, I remember packing some polyester bell bottoms. So oh. that should give you some idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. Mm. You know what you should do? What's that? Go home. Get your atlas out. Open it up to, to, to any page. It doesn't matter. Close your eyes, pick a spot, and book your flight. Maybe I should go out there and make my own timeline, huh? Mm -hmm. And don't forget to book a round trip. And don't forget to write. Where's Haley? She went home. She upset? Par for the course, thanks to me. I seem to have a knack for getting on the wrong side of my little girl. You did a whole lot more than getting on her wrong side. There's no excuse for what you did to your daughter in there. Paralysis is not an option, though. Time does not stand still, and neither does Erica Kane. You will walk, run, jump, climb, swim, ride. In short, you're going to make a full recovery. It's my job to make sure that that happens. All right? Feel like going for a ride? I'm ready. Okay. Tomorrow, Bratwurst, Beer, and BMWs. This is Charles Gibson. And Joan London will be in Munich, Germany, as our passport to Europe continues. Good morning, America. Tomorrow, here on ABC. Now stay tuned for One Life to Live, next.